Yeah, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Rob, host of From My Experience podcast. I'm hyped. I'm excited. I love the topic of today's episode. Got a few things to share with y'all. I want to start with a very special message, man. Shout out to my boy Carl Van, the founder of Pass the Peas app. If you have not downloaded the Pass the Peas app, you need to download it. I'm trying to get y'all in on the ground floor of something that's about to be spectacular. Man, download that app. Add some recipes so I can follow you. You can follow me. Get some of my recipes, man. Some great things are happening with Pass the Peas app, and I wanted to start with that. And also, I want to start with this. How are you doing? You doing all right? How y'all feeling out there? You're taking it easy? Huh? I hope y'all doing great out there. Shout out to you, our loyal listeners. Those of you who like, share, subscribe, FME underscore podcast on Instagram from my experience podcast. Join the Facebook group. Check us out at FME podcast.com and you can check our blog out, man. Yo, this episode is like 10,000% positive. I got you today. I got you. All right. What a day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know what time of day it is for you, but welcome to From My Experience Podcast, man. We're going to get right into the headlines. Brace yourselves. Please brace yourselves, man. Uh, first and foremost, if you haven't heard, you must be under a rock if you haven't heard about this. But I want to send a rest in peace to Tyree Nichols. That was a young black man that was murdered by five black police officers. I. <sighs> yeah. In Memphis, I believe this is in Memphis, Tennessee, man. I There's a lot swirling around that. The only thing, I, I just want to say rest in peace to him, and I just want to say this to anyone who's following the story or report on the story, please, reporting on the story, please get your facts straight. There's rumors coming out uh, about all kinds of stuff, and I'm just like, yo, let's not run with that. We got to remember that man had a family, that man had a child. Um, wait for more details to come out, and get your facts right before you spew a bunch of craziness. Um... Yeah, and also, uh, I would like some more updates on the white officer who was also involved. I believe he was the one who tased that young brother. And, yeah. And that was from BBC News. Oh, man. That's, you know. Yeah. All right. Um, hmm. I hate to read stuff like that, man. I swear I do. But I, I pray his family gets justice. Nothing will ever bring him back. But I do know that those officers are charged and fired. And in uh, they were in custody. I don't know if they bonded out or not. But I'm just going to keep his family in prayer, man. That was just... That sucked. Uh... Switch into a lighter note. I got to do like a hard turn to a lighter note just because that was just so somber. Lotto. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Lotto. What's up, man? <laughs> Lotto, who is a female rapper known as Lotto or Big Lotto. Apparently, people saw her wearing leopard draws two days in a row and people tried to clown her on the internet and uh, to troll the trolls she said you know what allegedly I'm gonna sell a pair of my used draws 
on the internet since y'all want to talk trash. And allegedly, a pair of Lotto's cheetah print panties went up on eBay and bids went as high as $95,650 for these draws. Um, and I believe they actually, eBay took it down because it's like against their policies. But it's like, wow, that's what you do to troll the trolls? I'm sorry, front page news was just crass. I'm, I'm sorry. Hey y'all, it's me, it's Christian Jackson, your favorite licensed therapist. I have a quick question for you, and this is no shade. Are you still stuck in that same dating cycle where you end up making choices that don't reflect who you are because you're turning into basically a chameleon, i.e. you mighty morph into whatever your new man or your new woman wants you to be. And your stomach is dropping and you're not sleeping, you're not eating, you're not taking care of yourself. And yes, these are symptoms of anxiety. Relationships are the trigger and they hard and they sometimes suck. So what do you need? Five things that I have in the Grace Method where you can find how to move from being anxiously in love to being more confident in your relationships. Not just dating though, folks, because your kids may be walking all over you too and you need a voice and they need to hear it, right? Come to your Grace space. I am building a community of like-minded women who want to get together monthly to discuss how to move from being anxiously connected to their relationships to being more confident just in themselves. And this accountability community will include the option of one-on-one therapeutic coaching calls with me access to experts and more go to couchwithchristian.com that is c-o-u-c-h-w-i-t-h-c-h-r-i-s-t-i-a-n.com follow me on ig at couch with christian and i'll see you there all right we back pardon me <clears throat> i'm finishing a crispy cream donut Whew. yo so Mm. She, pardon me. Hold on. I, I need. A, I need a sip of my beverage. I'm about to. <sighs> okay. Yo. So, my Instagram has been on point lately, um, and I love that. Oh shoot! You know what? I forgot something in front page news. Dag nabbit. I was looking at it too, y'all. Hold up. We're going to have to run that back. Hello. That's what happens when you're on your own podcast. You do what you want. Shout out to my boy, Virgil Johnson, who was a guest this year. First guest of 2023 on From My Experience podcast. Um, Huge shout out. Huge, 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 huge shout out to the brothers. Oh, my goodness. It disappeared. Brothers of New Era Detroit. They were pumping gas, loading groceries, and looking over black women moving around Detroit after dark. That was a beautiful thing to see. Um, As I said, Virgil Johnson sent that to me. You can follow them on Instagram. New... Yeah, New Era Detroit. All one word. New Era Detroit. Um... They are they specialize in the organizational structure of black communities, making organization where we live a lifestyle. All right, now that's all your front page names for real. Hopefully y'all can't hear my AC. I'm just having everything everything I don't need to happen while I'm recording is happening. All right, so back to where I was before I messed up. <sighs> I've been super duper inspired by my Instagram page. And this is this is another reason why, and I've said this a billion times. This is why I keep removing negative stuff off my Instagram and continue to follow and continue to follow positive influences and positive people. So I'm gonna shout out to a past guest who will be a current guest once again. Jennifer McPherson. She's a licensed professional counselor. You can follow her at Jen McPherson LPC on Instagram. So she inspired this week's episode, man. And I posted it on our Instagram, FME underscore podcast. Green flags for people in your life. Green flags, green flags. You know, it is okay 
to flip things on their head every now and again. And she flips something that's been very popular and very trendy on its head. Which is, we always talk about red flags. People always talking about red flags. Look out for this. Look out for that. Red flag this. Red flag. Flag on a play. We joke about that, right? But green flags are the opposite. Green flags are things you should be looking out for or positive aspects. And we don't talk about that enough. Again, back to the root of this podcast, promoting positivity, sharing positive news because everyone wants to share the negative and stir up controversy and there's room for that too but i just feel like the positive news and the positive stuff isn't talked about enough isn't shared about enough hence the birth of from my experience podcast so what i just want to do is go over each one of the green flags that she posted hope you take this down hope you take it down you know either physically or internally and this is something special i want all of you to do all of you, 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 all of you. I want all of you to do this, right? You ready? You ready? Are you ready? I want all of you to think of a friend or friends that have these green flags. Yes, you. I want you to think of your friends, family members, whoever is in your circle or around you. Think of who is around you that has these green flags. Number one, their presence is calming. Yo, and, and, you know, beyond that, not only think about the friends and family and whoever's in your life who has these green flags, think about the ones that you have. So their presence is calming. That is so dope, man. I, I know at one time or another, and y'all probably have been there too, someone has called you to calm them down. Or someone just wants to be around you because you're the chill person. Or you're going to an event or going to a kickback or something like that, and you want to make sure that that chill person is there because you know they know the vibes. Everything's going to be good as long as this person is there. So calmness is definitely something that is needed. And the other thing about calmness is you don't have to worry about as much drama. Like there may be some drama, but the calm person typically knows how to calm an entire situation down. That's typically me. I'm typically the calm one just because of my abnormal, <laughs> my abnormal way of thinking. Um, it takes a lot for me to get upset and to get angry. But when I do, that's pretty much it. It's like zero to 100. It ain't the healthiest thing. It ain't the best thing. It's just the way I'm wired. But a lot of stuff doesn't bother me because my mentality is this sometimes. Once it's happened, that's it. It happened. You can't go back and change it. You can feel how you want to feel about it. You're allowed to have your thoughts. You're allowed to have your feelings. That is 100% cool and valid. But how much time and energy energy are you going to invest in feeling about feeling a way about what happened that you can't change. Like once it happened, it happened. What can I do about it? That's just really my mentality. I focus on solutions and I find that I find myself in a better mood and I'm happier way more than I'm upset or depressed. Cause I'm like, it's not a nonchalant. I don't care attitude. It's a, okay, that happened. This is the impact. Now what are we going to do about it? That's the attitude. So I don't want you to think I'm running around like, well, I don't care. It happened. Oh, well, life happens. No, I pray and I put in the work. But um, that's part of the reason why I have such a calm nature. Like when people get an attitude, like at the grocery store or at a restaurant, that kind of stuff don't bother me. But some people, y'all be 38 hot for two days over that. Not me. As long as you ain't messing with my food, look, whatever's going on with you, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to just keep it moving. I ain't do nothing to you. So... Sorry, I can't help I can't help your mood. Hope you have a better day. Their presence is calming. Do you have a friend who has a calming presence? Do you have some people around you that have calming presences? Number 2, they respect your opinion. Yo, so they respect your opinion. Uh, rest in peace, Stack Bundles, one of my favorite rappers from back in the day. He said, respect is earned and not gave. Respect is earned, not given. For me, to, Let me translate that for some of y'all. When someone respects your opinion, that's huge. That's huge. And everybody wants to be around people 
or being around someone who respects their opinion. Because when someone respects your opinion, you can be your authentic self and you are heard. And I talk a lot about wanting to be heard and needing to be heard in all of my relationships. Because if you ain't hearing me, I'm not there. I'm out of here. Because I'm wasting my time at that point and you clearly don't respect my opinion. So, hey, that's on you. That is your loss. But do you have friends or people in your life that respect your opinion? Meaning, they're not attacking you. Where did I hear this at? It might have been Kitty Rose because that's who I've been listening to lately. But they and they don't attack you. They attack your idea or they challenge your idea. Or they listen to what you have to say and give you a couple tweaks. They don't brush you off or laugh at you or act like you don't know what you're doing. So respecting someone's opinion is very, very, very huge. And quite frankly, I don't deal with people who don't respect my opinion because we, we're not going to have nothing to talk about. I mean, I have a freaking podcast where I share my experiences, which are par- partially made up of experiences, which are things that have happened and me giving my opinion on situations. So do you have someone in your life that respects your opinion or do you have multiple people? Who are they? Think about that. Next green flag. They make you laugh. Come on now. Who doesn't like to laugh? Who doesn't like to have a good time? Who doesn't like to, as we say in the South, cut up? Yo, laughter is highly important. I love to laugh. I often find myself laughing by myself, just scrolling through Instagram. And shout out to my boy, Eric, Carl, uh, Micah, Colin, Kamisha, uh, Sheena, Raina. So many people on Instagram that I send crazy stuff to just to make them laugh. Just so we can get a laugh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just so we can get a laugh in. Because laughter is so important. Pardon me. Laughter is important because there's just so much dreary, bad stuff out there that you got to have the jokes in. You got to have the laughs in. And that's definitely me. I will definitely wave that green flag um, very, very, very proudly because that is one of the things that I'm known for. One is calming and two uh, just making people laugh. So do you have people around you that make you laugh? Healthy laughter that are actually funny. Cause there's a difference. There are people that make you go, <laughs> make you hit that Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> and then there's people that make you go, <laughs> you never know which one you're going to get with me. But, uh, yeah. Do you have people in your life? Do you have relationships with people that make you laugh? All right. Next green flag. They listen without judgment. All right, so they listen without judgment. Now, this is what I would call, in my opinion, I would categorize this as like a premium quality. Listening without judgment is something that I do very well. Uh, I have a few friends who listen without judgment as well. And to me, this is what listening without judgment is like. I can get on the phone. I can vent right, wrong, indifferent. You will listen. You will still understand and recognize who I am and not Because typically when people are listening without judgment, you're probably telling them something pretty bad or probably something pretty low that you've done. And listening without judgment means you don't attach the entire person to that one isolated thing or two or three isolated things. You know, you know who I am to my core. You know my character. You know me as a person. And also, you don't attack me with that information at a later date and time. That's the other thing. Now, as human beings, of course, when people tell us stories, because I've had friends tell me stories, and in my head, I'm like, what in the ham sandwich, hot diggity dog was you thinking? What is you doing? Oh, my God, I never thought this about you. But I didn't judge them. I had my thoughts, and I kept them moving, because guess what? I'm pretty sure I've done that to people, too, and we are human, and we make mistakes. It's going to happen. You are not perfect. The people in your life are not perfect. But we all could benefit from just having an outlet to where we can sit, speak, be heard, and not judge. We already, we're probably already beating ourselves up enough, so we don't need you 
to say, hey, yeah, that was wrong. You're trash, yada, yada. Like, we don't need that. And we definitely don't need it thrown in our face at a later date and time. I think that is probably the one of the worst things you can do to someone is listen to them in confidence because they're trusting you with this information. And then at a later date and time at your convenience, or typically when you feel in some type of way, you want to throw it in their face. How can you expect that person to trust you or deal with you ever again when they've shared a very deep, personal, intimate moment with you and you weaponize it against them? So that's why I say that's a premium quality, listening without judgment, because the judge, you like, you got to carry that. You know what I'm saying? You got to carry that. And even if that means in your head, you know what, maybe I can't align with you anymore. You can tell them that and be, be upfront and real if you can't handle carrying that judgment. But having judgmental friends, it don't work. It don't work because y'all going to talk behind each other's back. Y'all going to low-key not like each other. And then it just becomes, well, I'll tolerate you. Or I won't invite you to stuff. And before you know it, y'all just drift apart. And then five years later, what happened? I don't know, man. Why we don't talk no more? You know what I'm saying? So I digress. But do you have friends or people around you that listen without judgment? I hope you have quite a few. I have quite a few. And they are very helpful. Next, they are supportive. Support comes in so many forms. Uh, Just words of encouragement, liking, sharing, subscribing, just like you all do with my podcast. Financial support, uh, connecting people with resources. And people just that will pat you on the back and say, keep going. You know, support is a uh, dream enhancer. And oftentimes it is a dream reviver because, you know, it's tough when you want to do your own thing out there. Like when I started this podcast, I said to myself, if I can get one person to listen and maybe change someone's life with just one of these episodes, I've done my job. And I cannot tell you how good it feels when people text, call or email and say, hey, great show. Oh, I love the show. I love listening to your show. I've had complete strangers, people I have never met and probably never will meet talk to me and support me um, in this podcast venture more than people that I've known for years. And that doesn't bother me or upset me because I have tough skin from from selling real estate because the same thing happened there. And what I realize is you're going to connect with who you connect with, but everyone supports you differently. Support don't always look the same from everybody. And you cannot set, I'm not going to say you can't, I would be cautious of setting expectations around the type of support you want if you have not been clear. Now, if you're clear and say, hey, I'm looking for this from you and they commit to it and then they don't do it, that's one way. But if I just come out with a clothing line and I automatically expect everyone I know to buy it and they don't and I get mad, well, did I set a clear expectation? You know, but the ones who who support you, just hold them close and continue to appreciate it. Dang it, I had a dope Instagram post I saw the other day that said, like, friends and family won't support you in the beginning, but they will once everybody else does. <laughs> and that's wild. And I'm going to encourage y'all not to take that friends and family thing too personal because your friends and family know you much more differently than other people. So your track record is different. They have a track record with you. And you probably wasn't the best. And like me, I hopped around to a bunch of different stuff. But when I did do it, I did it right. I never screwed nobody over. never took nothing. I just did what I did. Maybe not for the longest time, but I did it. So I appreciate the support that I continue to get. But, you know, we do have a track record. And sometimes if your track record ain't the best, you can't expect expect the best type of support. Because you've been all willy-nilly and people gave you money and you didn't do what you're supposed to do or... You didn't ship your product or, hey, man, you know, I'm doing trucking now. Well, shoot, you just asked me to do one, two, three, four, five and hook you up with these resources for your printing business. Yeah, I changed my mind. That kind of stuff. Eh, you know what I'm saying? But do you have supportive friends? And and another thing, be very careful, man. That that low key sneaky person, get them out of there. The sneak this person, get them out of there. The person I always got something negative to say, get them out of there. Keep supportive friends around you. One of the, man, it warmed my heart. My boy Carl Van has called me twice this week. Shout out to Carl Van, Pass the Peas app. Download Pass the Peas app right now. He called me twice this week just to share good news. And I could have did a cartwheel. Because one, I'm happy and glad 
that he is making things shift and move with Pastor P's app, but two, he is comfortable enough and trusts me enough, and that says a lot about our relationship with one another, that he can share his good news with me and not there's no negative ramifications. I don't expect anything more from him. I don't expect him to give me money or put me on or do all these things. Yo, you can just call me and share your good news and I will be happy with you because I understand what it's like to build and grow and build and grow and hit um, hit some turbulence or you run into a rough patch and then finally you break through and somebody says yes or you get that resource or you get that next piece that you need. Oh, my God, it feels so good and you cannot wait to share it with someone. And not only, not only just sharing it, you want to share it with someone who actually understands and gets what that means when you make it past that hump. It feels great, man. So I'm glad I'm able to do that. So do y'all have supportive friends? Do you have three, four, five, 10, 15 people in your phone right now that you could call and share good news with and they're going to be just as happy as you? Think about that. You can't share your good news with everybody. That's something I learned the hard way. They bring it up later, try to play you with that information later, take note. That's all I got to say about that. Next green flag. They respect your needs. Hoo, hoo, hoo. They respect your needs. So one of the big things that um, is that tends to cause a bit of turmoil in friendships, in my opinion, is people will, I'm going I'm to kind of talk about both of these. The next green flag is actually they honor your boundaries. Respecting your needs and honoring your boundaries kind of tie into one another, but your needs kind of ties into all the green flags. If you need your friends to be supportive, you need some, you need them, you know, to respect your opinion or you need them to make you laugh. You need their support, your needs, and they respect that. They don't judge that. They understand this is what this person needs from me or this is what this person is looking for. Or, heck, maybe I got a job where I got to get up at five in the morning, but you always getting on me or talking trash because I don't hang out late with y'all. Or you tease me because I go to bed at seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night. Well, I got to get up early. You're not respecting my needs. Like, I want to hang out with y'all, but I need to get up for work. Something that simple. So really think about what your needs are and have you exp how you express them and how your friends react to your needs. One of the big ones that people have a hard time respecting is you needing space. It doesn't mean you did anything wrong. It doesn't mean we beefing. I'm one of those people. I need space sometimes and my friends respect that. I don't call nobody. Jessica, I've been talking to you a lot lately. Carl, I've been talking to you a lot lately. I don't have to call my mama no more because she downstairs, but... Other than that, and Corwin, he called me all the time, but I don't call anybody and it's not personal. I don't have beef. I don't have a problem. It's not personal. I'm just, I'm just an isolated, introverted person. I don't know why, but that that's just how I am. And my friends who get it, they understand and they respect that need for me just to think and to work and tinker and do these things and they'll take it out on me later. But think about what your needs are from the smallest things to the largest things, even if it's safety, you know what I'm saying? Yo, man, don't be rolling in my car with what, with, 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 with hootie hootie who up on you. Or yo, man, you know, you ain't gotta, you ain't gotta, you know, tease me or make fun of me because I wear my seatbelt. You think seatbelts kill more people than they save. Or dang, man, you ain't got a rag on me because I can't go on the, the trip with y'all because I'm, I'm saving up for this. I got to do this. I got responsibilities. Stuff like that, because people aren't dumb. We need to start giving people the credit that they deserve. People know the difference between you are my friend, you're making fun of me, and it's a mutual joke and I get it, versus you're trying to disguise an attack as a joke. People understand the difference. A lot of people have learned to cope or even work through them, but you got to be very careful with that. So understand the difference. Do you have people that respect your needs? They honor your boundaries. That's the next green flag. Your boundaries. Your boundaries. Boundaries has been a buzzword for the past couple years. We are late to the party, ladies and gentlemen. But boundaries are very, very similar to, to your needs. But boundaries are just hard things that you set into place that lines you don't want people to cross that they don't need to cross. That could be something as simple as, hey, 
you know, uh, don't call me after a certain time. Don't talk to me about this person. Don't speak to me in this manner. Don't use profanity when you speak to me. You're like, there's just so many things surrounding boundaries and you need to speak on that. Speak on that with your friends. Think about what your boundaries are and think about the people in your life that respect those boundaries. I think one of the biggest ones is people just talking to you any kind of way. That's a very big boundary for a lot of people. Um, And that's a very easy one to get past, in my opinion, when it comes to the person on the outside looking in at the person who has the boundary. Just watch your mouth. Like, it's really not that hard. You can express yourself and get your point across without yelling, screaming, and cussing. You can write a note. You can send an email. You can send a text. You can send a voice memo. There's just so many ways you can do that. But are you doing that? And then other, you know, other boundaries, you know, if you're into certain activities and you like to do certain things and your friends don't, because I have friends like that. And it's not that it's anything negative that they're doing. It's just not for me. My friends respect that. They wouldn't even ask me that. They wouldn't drag me out there to end up in a situation where I would do that because that's a boundary that I have. Another boundary that I have is I like structure. Um, I like to plan things and do things in a certain way. Um, being spontaneous every now and again is cool depending on what it is. But if it's like, yo, you trying to plan like a three or four hour outing, now I need to know, I need at least an outline or something. That's one of my biggest boundaries. I like to know where I'm going and what I'm doing. One, for safety reasons, and two, for time management. I, I'm just, I just don't float out here all willy-nilly. I can't. I personally do not operate very well under those types of conditions. I can do it, but I don't like it. I like to have a blueprint or at least an outline, if not a detailed plan to follow. That's one of my boundaries. Like, yo, where's the structure? What what structure are we rolling off of? Because there's no structure. Nine times out of 10, I ain't going to be a part of it. So do you have friends or people in your life that honor your boundaries? Two more, y'all. Ooh, this ne- Hold up. This next one. Next green flag. <laughs> they make an effort. Oh, 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 yo, how many passive people do you have in your life that give you the same one? I'm gonna pray for you. Word. Oh, that's dope. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm so happy for you. Yeah. But when you actually need something, they're never there. They don't go do the, the errand you need them to do. They ain't never got it. You always got it for them, but they ain't never got it for you when you need it. Whatever that may be. I think that's a universal. Long story less long, you always have it. Whatever it is, you always have it when they need it from you. But when you need it from them, they never have it. Mm. And that's effort. That's effort. Effort is also doing things you don't want to do sometimes for the benefit of the friendship and for the benefit of your friend. I've been there. Like I said, I'm introverted and I love my friends and y'all, if you're listening, please don't take this personal. It's not personal. I don't be wanting to talk on the phone sometimes. Like people call me and because I know it's them and it's important, I'll talk to them and I'll listen intently. And it's not negative or anything, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, I just want to lay down and play Xbox. That's just me. But I'm putting effort into my friendship. One, because I know that I know the role I play in that friendship or relationship. And two, I do that too. I know I know that that's on the other end of the spectrum. I know that there's times when I call people, they probably don't want to talk or don't want to be bothered, but they do it because they know it's me. And they're like, mm, they probably need to get something off their chest. or they're probably calling me for this or probably calling me for that. Let me holler at them and see what's good. And nine times out of 10, it turns out to be a great conversation. And I'm glad I had it at the end of the day anyway. So... <laughs> Yeah, that's just a thing. But making an effort is highly important. If there's a disagreement, are you the one who always has to be the one to initiate the makeup? When y'all plan stuff, are they just showing up or are they helping you plan it and contributing? You know what effort looks like. You know what effort looks like. And if you're not making an effort, okay. Yeah, I don't do dead weight. But do you have people in your life or people around you that are making an effort? Last green flag, probably one of the most important. They make you feel valued. They make you feel valued. That kind of ties in 
a bunch of the other flags. I'm not going to get into particulars, but they make you feel valued. Feeling valued is awesome. When you speak with someone or you speak life into someone and they heed your words and their life changes or you give them that advice or they thank you. They actually say thank you for being my friend. They might buy you a gift on your birthday or for Christmas. They might give you an extra long hug. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of ways to make someone feel valued. Do your friends make you feel valued? Or do you feel like, dang, every time I talk to them, I do something for them. There's just, there's no gratitude. There's no appreciation. It feels like a a waste. If it feels like a waste, you might want to reevaluate that. So do you have friends that make you feel valued? Do you have relationships with people that make you feel valued? That's all I got for y'all, man. I'm going to talk to my black brothers in a minute. But uh, green flags, green flags. I'm going to name them all one more time. Their presence is calming. I'm sorry. Green flags for people in your life. Here are the green flags. There's nine of them. Their presence is calming. They respect your opinion. They make you laugh. They listen without judgment. They are supportive. They respect your needs. They honor your boundaries. They make an effort. They make you feel valued. Now, trying to find all of this in one person, good luck. But, you know, we all have friends who have these green flags. But that's why we call people for certain things and we respect people in a different way for different uh, attributes that they that they have. That's why we have a, a group of friends. All of them bring something unique and different to the table. But I feel like they should have at least four of these. Three to four of these. You got to have at least three to four. I say four. You should have at least four. That's just my opinion. That's just my thought. Hope y'all got something from that. I hope you came up with some names to attach to some of these things because sometimes we sit back and say, how did I become friends? Or why are we such good friends? I wonder why. These are things like this are the reason why. <laughs> it's the way they make you feel and it's the way that they they add to your life. They don't take away, they only add to your life. All right. So let me holla at my black brothers. Brothers, brothers, brothers. Oh my goodness. A little board over here is wilding out. Brothers. I was uh, highly, 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 highly inspired and a little bothered by um, the Brothers of New Era Detroit. So I talked about this in... Front page, I forgot I keep wanting to say that, I'm going to get sued. Headlines, um, and how they were in Detroit looking over black women, moving around Detroit after dark, pumping gas, loading groceries. That is awesome, noble, and dope. I wish, and I don't know why, so let me say that. It could just be, hey, this is what we're doing. But, you know, there are, I will say the news reports, because I don't live in Detroit, but the news reports and talks about certain cities and certain places as if they're dangerous. I hope they're doing it out of, I hope it's being done because I'm not going to, I don't know the organization. Sounds like a great dope organization. I'm going to assume that they're doing it out of, hey, this is what we do in the community. Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, which is dope. But I hope it's not being done out of, dang, we really need to do this because it's dangerous out here. I hope that's not the case. But in any event, I would love to see more stuff like this happen in general. And I would love to see it show up for one another more. I would love to see the attacking stop. Um, You know, you can't control what someone else does or how someone else treats you 100%. People are going to say what they want to say and do what they want to do. What you can control is your reaction to it. And one of the things we can do is step up as leaders, whether it's in our friend groups 
or whatever whatever other spheres of influence that we run in. You know, I, there's been times in my life where I've had to tap someone on the shoulder and say, hey, bro, that's not cool. Like, don't do that. Or like, yo, you can't be around me doing that type of stuff. You need to cut that out. What if that was your cousin? What if that was your mom? What if that was your sister? What if that was your wife? What if that was your daughter? I think we need to do more of that. Definitely. We're getting a little too loose at the tongue. And again, I've already talked about toxic freedom. Everybody's so free. And everybody wants to be able to do what they want to do and all this other stuff. But it's like, yo, you're throwing morals and respect and values out the window. And it's all good and it's all fun and games when you're doing it. But when someone does it to you or someone that you love, you mad. It doesn't make any sense. You putting out the same, you getting back the same energy that you're putting out, but you don't want it to come back to you. Ah, karma. So that's all I really got to say about that, man. If you can be a positive influence... Look out for our wonderful, beautiful black queens. Please do so. And hold your friends accountable. Those those who hang around you, you're like, yo, if you don't respect respect black queens, bro, you can't be around me. Period. And we standing on that. End of story. All right, y'all. That's all I got for you, man. Shout out to Virgil Johnson. Thanks for sending me that post on Instagram, bro. Shout out to Jennifer McPherson, licensed professional counselor. We'll be on the show soon. I think within the next couple of weeks. Uh, thank you for posting about green flags, man. Check your green flags, y'all. Check your green flags. Check the people around you and see who is waving the green flag and appreciate them. And look for green flags. Stop looking for red flags. Stop, stop having a negative mentality, pessimistic mentality. Look for the green flags. You're not going to have one person that's going to do it all. Because the green flag, listen, we all got red flags. But do the green flags outweigh the red flags? And don't confuse a red flag with a deal breaker. Woo! Don't confuse the red flags with a deal breaker. <laughs> yeah. But until next time, y'all, you know, FME underscore podcast. Check us out on Instagram. FMEpodcast.com. Check out the website. You can listen to the show. And you can read our blog from my experience podcast group on Facebook, FME underscore podcast on fan base. Shout out to fan base. Podcast consultations coming soon, man. If you you have someone or if you're out there and you're thinking about starting a podcast and you're at ground zero, I want to help you get off to a very strong start. Help you avoid some of the pitfalls and potholes that I had to bump into. 260 something episodes and I'm still learning but I want you to be better than me and you can do it better than me and I want to help you get off to a strong start that'll be coming soon all right until next time take care of yourselves physically mentally financially we'll catch you next time peace